Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Well, I've done it myself. I bought clip-on ferrite beads off of Amazon.com to address an issue. I got a selection of them for a very reasonable price. But did they solve my problem? Well, not really. So why is that? Well, not all ferrites are created equal. The mix that is used to create the ferrite material affects the frequencies that it will be effective at. And I will demonstrate this difference a bit later in this video. So, how do you test that ferrite that you found in your junk box? That is what I'm going to show you here. I will show you how to do this with my Nano VNA. Now, you can do this with a higher end VNA or similar device as well. The process is the same. Now, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's talk about setup. Well, you begin setup by creating a fixture for the measurement. It is a very simple fixture, really. In fact, it is the same fixture that I use to test the effectiveness of a common mode choke in my series on the subject. Mine consists of two BNC panel mount FEMO connectors tied together so that the grounds are the same. I've soldered test clips to the center of each connector and positioned them at right angles to each other. Done. The second part of the fixture is the wire loop. Now, it's nothing fancy really. It's just a piece of bare number 12 solid wire bent so that it fits between the two clips as you can see here. And this gives me something to clip my ferrite beads to. Now, let's get the Nano VNA ready for measurement. To get the Nano VNA ready for the measurement, our first step is to set the frequency limits of our measurement. For my test, I set them from 100 kilohertz to 200 megahertz. There is no sense in cluttering the screen with stuff I don't need, so I'm going to turn off some of the traces. I will configure the one trace I have left to have a log format, and the channel to be channel 1 through. I'm going to also set the scale per division for 2 dB per division. To get ready for calibration, I connect port 1 or port 0 on the Nano VNA to one connector of my fixture and port 2, which is port 1 on the Nano VNA, to the other connector of my test fixture as seen here. We are going to calibrate for a through measurement. So now I get to calibrate. I'm going to calibrate through and click done. I don't need the rest of the calibration stuff like open, short, and load for this measurement. If your particular device also requires an isolation step in the through calibration, simply remove the wire connecting the two test clips and perform this step. Now that the calibration is complete, Notice now that the trace is sitting at the top with the marker showing 0 dB with the wire loop in place. We are ready to go. Well, making the measurement is as simple as installing the clip-on ferrite on the wire loop and then reading the values off of the screen using the on-screen marker. I will demonstrate with one of my clip-on ferrites. What you will see here is the data as imported to Excel. Here is what we got with one of my smallest generic tubular ferrite beads. We can see here that it has a fairly flat benefit from 70 MHz all the way up to 200 MHz. The benefit isn't too impressive at about 0.8 dB at 10 MHz, moving toward 5.5 dB at 70 MHz. The best we do is 5.8 dB at 89.4 MHz, now, what would happen if we put two of them on? Well, 
Let's see. We have about the same kind of curve, but now we see about 2.2 dB benefit at 10 MHz with 8.9 dB at 70 MHz. I find the best benefit of 9.2 dB at 89.9 MHz. Well, and, and now what about 3? Now the benefit is about 2.9 dB at 10 MHz, moving toward 10.9 dB at 70 MHz, and at 133.5 MHz, there is a 12.1 dB benefit. There seems to be the law of diminishing returns at work here. We got 5.5 dB at 70 MHz with one, we got an additional 3.4 dB with the second one, and then we got 2 dB more with a third. Each additional bead added to the mix provides less additional benefit. Notice too that at lower frequencies, there was nearly no benefit at all. At 10 MHz with one, we only saw 0.8 dB of help, Add another one and we get 2.2 dB, an increase of 1.4 dB. With the third, we got 2.9 dB, an addition of a measly 0.7 dB. I tried one from each size clip-on ferrite that I received from Amazon with very similar results. Now, what about the promised difference due to ferrite mix that I talked about in the introduction? To see the difference, I pulled out a couple box-type clip-on ferrites from my junk box. Now, on the surface, there doesn't seem to be any real difference except in color. One of these is a very generic version, and the other is a clip-on ferrite from the ferrite company. I also pulled out a very generic tubular clip-on ferrite, which is similar in size to the two box types. I measured its response so we can compare the box type to the tubular as well. And this is what the results look like. Now let me add to this the test results from my very generic box style clip-on ferrite. Notice that these results are very similar to the results from our tubular generic clip-on ferrite. It has a bit better performance, but not a lot. I mean just about 1 dB. Now. Let's see what this ferrite clip-on does. Here are those results. The shape of the curve is very similar to the others, and the benefit at 10 MHz is almost identical. But look at its performance at 70 MHz. The tubular bead gives us 7.3 dB. The generic box style sits at 7.8 dB, just a half a dB better whereas the genuine ferrite box style is 9.7 dB. So how does this look laid up to one of the smaller generic beads we started with? Man, you can really see the difference. Now I'm going to add the traces from where we had three of the generic beads together. This one bead is almost as good as three of the generic beads. The takeaway lessons from this is to pay attention to the specifications of the bead you buy and, well, you get what you pay for. Just because it's a ferrite doesn't mean it will do the job that you're looking to do. Well, you can perform this same test with multiple passes through the same ferrite using this same sort of procedure. But like with adding ferrites in series, the law of diminishing returns is active here as well. You have seen that it makes a difference where you get the ferrites from and exactly what ferrite you purchase. Know your application, then research the best ferrite for that application. And when in doubt, the manufacturers are often very happy to answer your questions and suggest a solution from among their products. Now you know how to evaluate those ferrites that you have floating around in your junk box. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.